Good day class. Welcome to another episode of Management 101. We are on our lecture three and for today we're going to discuss about ethics and social responsibility. So let me check if this is recording. Just kidding. Anyway, our objectives for today are the following. Define what um, ethics is and social responsibility. Okay, so another one is that Explain ethical dilemma. What is it? Okay. What else? The factors affecting employee ethics. What are those? Ethical decision-making approaches. Importance of social responsibility to organizations. I'm pretty sure you have heard of that. And discuss the views of social responsibility. But before I proceed, I would like to ask you, what is your perception of ethics? And why is it important in businesses? Okay. So later on, we're going to delve more on that, okay? So, there, what is ethics? Ethics is the code of moral principles and values that govern the behavior of a person or group with respect to what is right or wrong, okay? So sometimes what is um, right in the perception of man is not actually morally right. And I was talking to a former advisee um, a few months back. She said that, Mom, bakit ngayon wala ng absolute truth? Parang lahat relative na. Parang if it does not satisfy me or it is not convenient for me, then it is wrong or it is unethical. So, ganun ba talaga yun? Okay? So... Um, just to have that definition, again, ethics is the code of moral principles and values that govern the behaviors of a person or group with respect to what is right or wrong. And as managers in the future or even entrepreneurs, you or we are called to become what? Managers at all levels in all different areas, regardless of the size and in all kinds of organizations, we will face an ethical dilemma. All of us are actually facing an ethical dilemma regardless of the profession na pipiliin natin. But what is an ethical dilemma? In your head, answer that question. What is ethical dilemma? We know what dilemma is, di ba? a problem or an issue. But ethical dilemma is defined as the situation that arises when all alternative choices and behavior have been deemed undesirable. There are potentially negative um, consequences Consequences making it difficult to distinguish between what is right and wrong. For example, in the fields of medicine, di pa, euthanasia, okay? So it is an ethical dilemma for the doctors. That's why um, if a relative or someone we know is on the verge of dying, yung living relative or surviving relative will be asked to sign a waiver, okay? Um, it is an ethical dilemma. Okay, and otherwise, the doctors will be sued for medical malpractice if um, he or she performed the euthanasia without the consent of the family members. I remember many moons ago, um, my Lola was supposed to have, kasi ano na siya eh, um, she was not speaking anymore, she was on the hospital bed, and then the doctors advised na lalagyan siya ng tubo. Um, as life support. And then uh, my mother and her siblings convened and decided that someone from them should sign the waiver na hindi na. And naturally, yun, uh, my Lola passed away a few hours after that. So there. Um, in the same manner, sa, in the field of veterinary medicine, Hindi ba meron din yan? Parang ano, whether the vet, uh, veterinarian will conduct or perform the euthanasia to a sick animal. So it's really a dilemma. In businesses, what dilemma, ethical dilemma can you think of? For example, I read somewhere that um, he, he used to be a salesperson and yung kalakaran dun sa field nila ay magbibigay ng under the table sa um, clients or customers in order to seal the deal or to close the contract. Um, obviously, it is an unethical. It is not 
an ethical dilemma but it is UN an ethical action so pero siya um he chose to be different instead of giving his clients were talking about diba mga millionaires and billionaires here what he did was to give a uh, a religious spiritual magazine and he thought that he won't be able to close the deal but thankfully thank god he was able to there he was able to close all the deals or seal the deals so there Um, can you give an example during the class or in your head? Um, you can ask me whether it is an ethical dilemma uh, to a certain field. Okay, so there, let's move on. So here we have three domains of human action. What are those? We have the domain of certified law, domain of ethics, and domain of free choice. So you can see underneath the amount of explicit control by who by the organization it is stated or said that um there is a high level or degree of control explicit control of an organization or management to its employees if um it is operating under the domain of certified law meaning that the sops standard operating rules and procedures within the organization are in place in the same manner we are bounded by rules all of us are bounded by rules we have the um up manual for all employees and staff to act ourselves accordingly so in the future when you join an organization you will be um briefed by HR or human resource management personnel regarding the SOPs and you'll be given it can be a, a hard copy or an e-copy ebook of the SOPs so yun yun domain of certified law legal standard however there's a moderate control for organization if um it is operating at the domain of ethics meaning social standard it is sinasabi ko sa inyo kanina na not all laws Uh, or social standards are right, but we try to tweak it or tend to make it right. And um, especially if it is against the, against the moral law. Parang we can choose to uh, agree to disagree. Kasi yun nga, we are formed by our environment, by our beliefs. Especially you're already formed. You're adults by now. You're young adults. So how did our environment shape us okay so meron siyang anthropogenic or parang kumbaga eh yung approach ay di ba parang not all people in the same manner na kunwari sa friendship di ba parang not not all of our friends ay like minded katulad ng sa atin pero we respect his or her opinion i remember in high school we I had a friend na paragi coming we were getting into each other's nerves kasi magkaiba talaga kami ng opinion but at the, at the end of the day we chose to be still friends not because we are neighbors or because um we are y- yung fathers namin ay magka kaibigan but because uh we 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 chose that so yun domain of ethics um for businesses there's a moderate control Um, for once this is followed, the domain of ethics, so social standard, okay? And then we also have this um, assumption or thing that an organization has a low degree of explicit control to its employees if it is operating under the domain of free choice. So personal standard. Yun nga eh, parang we are all bounded by rules. Why? Because if the, imagine if there are no rules. There will be lawlessness or chaos. Sometimes it gets confusing, especially we are living in a very exciting yet challenging times. Na parang wait lang, um, morally and and ethically yung action na yon. Pero why is it happening, di ba? Yung nga guys, money and power are the acid test of character. If you want to know the character of a person, give him power and or money. So yun lang yun. But as UP students, we are trained not to only be intellectuals, but um, someone who knows how to be compassionate, um, not just to ourselves, but most especially to the people, di ba? 
um, utak at puso yun. So, domain of free choice, ito, dito na talaga mas nagkakatalo or naglalabo-labo. Sometimes, you know what, I really don't want to read um, Twitter anymore or the news because those are negativity. So, sabi ko nga, I have to choose my battles. Well, kasi parang it really baffles me how on earth these people are thinking and acting like this. Um, wala lang, maisingit lang, di ba? Kunwari, um, ah, hindi pala, naglabas ng statement kahapon si Chris Aquino. Naisip ko, ano ba ginagawa ni, ni Chris Aquino masama sa kanila? When in fact, actually, she's helping out. Hindi ako fan, pero parang ano, um, we create biases or parang lagi na lang natin napapagdudahan yung um, magandang action ng mga tao. Kunwari, di ba, I remember the time last year when Pico Soto was called in an off government office because of doing right. Wow, sabi ko, unimaginable yung mga tao ngayon. Or even VP Lenny Robredo doing um, social works and yet um, napapagdudahan. Well, again, under domain of free choice or personal standard. You can only confirm that something is right or good when there is peace inside and that you are not affecting negatively yourself and other people. And if you are doing something bad na hindi mo na alam na bad pala yun at negative na yung effect sa'yo at sa ibang tao, matakot ka na. Kasi ibig sabihin, hindi na gumagana yung cautious. That's why we really have to have someone um we can identify with or someone na makikinig tayo at makikinig din sa atin. So, yun. Yun lang naman. Anyway, factors that affect employee ethics. So, these are stages of moral development. One by one, we're going to, um, in passing lang, uh, i-discuss natin individual characteristics. What are those? We also have the issue intensity the structural variables and organizational culture. This is this is very interesting, guys, because um, these are the factors that actually shape us, okay, and that will help us to become um, future managers and entrepreneurs. All right. So, can you make an association based on the domain that I have shown you earlier, or the framework that I have shown you uh, earlier? What can you infer? So, for five seconds. Okay, so um, in organizations, parang especially the um, industrial revolution or historically speaking, during the pre-conventional era, um, employees tend to follow rules to avoid punishment. Sumusunod kasi takot. Parang ganito ako ng bata. Gusto kong sumunod or sumusunod ako sa nanay ko kasi natatakot ako mapalo, mga tipong ganyan. I, know, I don't know if you have experienced that palo acts in own. Pero, I love my mother naman. And I was joking right now na, sabi ko, ma, if there's one thing na pinagsisihan mo sa buhay mo, ano yun? Tapos, she answered differently. And then I said, ah, hindi yung pamamalo mo sa, sa akin at saka sa mga kapatid ko. Well, anyway, that's off topic. So, acts in own interest, obedience for its own sake. So, ang existing sa na leadership style nito sa organization ay autocratic or coercive. That's why yung mga employees, nag a lang sila for the sake of task accomplishment. Parang, ma sige, matapos na lang, ganyan, ganyan. Pero, ay, lagi ko hinukwento sa inyo, um, guys, um, when you work in the future, because surely you will naman talaga, um, sabi nga ni MVP, well, after graduation, you get the, if you're not able to land in your dream job, at least get the first job that will be offered to you decently, learn as much as you can and build yourself out of that. So for the first five years, that's the crucial. And yun nga, um, Prof. Emeritus namin sabi niya, ayaw ng mga graduates ng UP kasi wala pa isang tao nila layasan na yung trabaho. And I also experienced that myself because I have from one job to another and during my 20s and I was not very proud of it. In the first place, sino ba nahirapan? Ako rin lang naman. And it's a reflection of yung character ko. That's why I'm sharing this for you not to be able to um, make the same mistakes that I have uh, had. Ganon. But you have your, you will have your own journey definitely and that's one thing you have to be excited for. Kaya lagi ko tinatanong sa inyo, how do you imagine yourself a year from now, three years from now, five years from now, or ten years from now? Okay, so it's important that we plan kung hindi man umayon sa kagustuhan natin yung plano. At least you have 
um, something, di ba? To, to look somehow. So, for the, ano, this pre-conventional is also associated to what? The domain of legal standards, di ba? Let's take a look here. Yan. The, the, the domain of certified law or the legal standard. Alright? Now, yun, yung gitna naman, it shows the what? Domain of ethics, yung level 2, yung conventional, level 3, post-conventional, domain of free choice. So, um, level 2, um, employees actually work through group collaboration. Not everybody of us want to be part of a group. But ako personally, I really love um, listening to people's ideas and most of the subjects I had back in college because my major is agribusiness management. Uh, mostly I team based. So I am amazed of how the dynamics of how people think and na validate yung ideas mo or kung hindi man siya pasok sa banga dun sa naiisip ng karamihan at least you're able to share your opinions or ideas that's why management 101 is about dealing or working with people so level 2 conventional lives up to the expectations of others fulfills duties and obligations of social system and upholds law. So there's still some level or degree of control here. The leadership style is guiding, encouraging, or team-oriented. Um, diba, of course, kahit naman ako estudyante, I would want my opinion or voice to be heard. And pag naman, ano, nakikita ko na this will benefit me in the future, then uh, I will accept. Pero kung hindi, um, Perhaps there is a better way of saying things, okay? So level three, post-conventional, follows self-chosen cho principles of justice and right, aware that people hold different values and six, creative solutions to ethical dilemmas, balances concern for individual with concern for common good. So dito napapasok yung ano, um, transforming or servant leadership. Um, I, I'm still hoping for the Philippines that we are worth fighting for, the Filipinos are still worth fighting for, and that there is still hope because um, despite of the nuances and chaos in our society today, I still believe that meron pa rin talaga mga Pilipino, whether young or old, who are dreaming, aspiring for a better Philippines. And the youth is not often wasted on the young. And that's why you are the future leaders and game changers of the society. It's not that you have to prove it, but because, alam mo yun, yung i-assimilate mo lang siya sa sarili mo na in one way or another, our small or big actions can create ripple effect. So, it's not being ideal, pero that change or the change, beautiful change that we want to happen somehow should start within us. So, leadership style, transforming or servant leadership as mentioned, and the employee behavior is empowered employees with full participation. That's why I'm always telling you that you enter an organization in the future should you wish to become an employee. Um, another organization that has the same vision and mission as yours. Because at least, parang with that, you don't have to feel as if you are working, but rather you are doing something you like, something you love. Okay, let's move on. So that's the levels or stages of personal model development. Now, individual characteristics. Sinong, ano, may tanong ako, sinong mas egoistic daw, babae or lalaki? Okay. The XY species or the XX species. So here, ego strength is defined as the personality measure of the strength of person's conviction. So it's not something negative pala, but positive. And it is uh, stated that a person or someone who has high ego strength is likely to act unethically. Okay? He or she follows convictions and do what they think is right. And that's the definition of high ego strength. Can you think of a person, maybe famous or not, maybe your parents, siblings, relatives, acquaintances, na sa palagay nyo, oh, this person has really high ego strength. Diba? Less likely to act unethically, follow convictions, do what they think is right. Pero doon na lang ako titigil sa less likely to act unethically. Diba? Kaya nga pag halimbawa someone we really look up to, a role model, tapos parang shocks hindi pala ganun yung buhay niya. 
sa totoong buhay. I mean, he's not uh, he his he or she's living a double standard life. Parang nakaka-disappoint. And I'm a victim of this especially after graduation. And it was because I was young, naive and somehow innocent. I really look up to some um public servants supposedly. They really are very intelligent. Pero one of the things that I realize is that you have to look at the life they are living, whether it's off tangent or parallel to what they are really preaching. So, di ba sabi nga, walk the talk. Okay? And, nagdraw ako dun sa conclusion na parang you can't idolize or look up to someone. Parang you just have to make that beautiful change nga sa sarili mo and become the better or best version of yourself. Not because out of pride, but because you know that you are a uh, really good a really good person. So, something like that. Um, ang mahirap lang din, kasi ka pag halimbawa nasa organization ka, you're confronted with a, a very risky and serious decision, um, doon ka talaga mapapaisip. Um, I remember there was a former senator who, who committed suicide. I don't know if you know that. Kasi parang doon sa graveyard no parents niya kasi siguro hindi na nakaya na konsensya niya yung mga pinagagawa niya. And that's the most, sabi ko nga, scary part of our being when you are doing something wrong and you know to yourself na it's wrong pero still you keep on doing it i i remember a middle age uh, a middle staff manager si isang government agency din ganun din yung ginawa niya kasi alam niya masama yung inuutos ng higher ups and yet um kinukontinue pa, pa niya rin kasi instead of going against the flow he went with the flow and then nung hindi na niya kaya he passed out so ang payo ko sa inyo if you are confronted with that thing parang get out of that organization rather than becoming the person you detest to be, you get out. Ang daling sabihin, pero sobrang hirap gawin kasi um, we are living in a very imperfect world, but still hold on to your good values pa rin. Okay, moving on. Uh, we have another individual characteristic which is called locus of control. By the way, guys, um, part of the individual characteristic is yung uh, education natin. Okay, so we just discussed two here. So another one is the locus of control. So this means personality attribute that measures the degree of which people believe they control their fate. Yan. So kung kunwari, di ba, in the future magiging empleyado kayo, we have this um, characteristic called internal locus of control and another external locus of control, which means internal locus of control, people control their own destinies, while external, what happens to people is due to luck or chance. Okay? So, dito rin papasok yung kay Niccolo Machiavelli na the end uh, justifies the means. Do you agree or disagree with that? Let's have a discussion perhaps when we meet. So, another characteristics aside from these two, ego strength, locus of control, moral reasoning level, education, and field dependence. But we're just going to focus on these two. And to show you clearly what am I um, telling about the locus of control is that ito, di ba? For the K-popers there, <laughs> okay, or the L, you know this person, so of course, start up. Are you Team Dosan or Team Chip Young? Sorry guys, if you're not a fan ha, baka mamaya, or even for the ladies out there, if you're not a fan, pagbigyan nyo na si teacher. So they are both really good looking. Yan. Ang pinag-uusapan natin dito ay locus of control ha. <laughs> Hindi yung mga kung sino mananalo sa puso ni uh, So Dull Me. Tama ba? So Dull Me. Whatever. Ayan. So sino dyan ng mga team Dosa? Sino dyan ng mga team Chip Yong? Ang papakita kong statement ay you tell me whether it's internal locus of control or external locus of control. Yan. We have two handsome gentlemen here. Yes. Sabi daw ni ano, ni Dosan. So Dalmi, kung tayo talaga para sa isa't isa, bahalang tulahan na magdikta. Mm, taray, sabi ni Nam Dosan. Sabi naman ni um, Jeep Yong, you know what, so Dalmi, I like you. I hope we can level up our friendship. What do you think? Talaga nagtatagalog tsaka nag english sila. Okay guys, with the assumption of. So, so si So Dalmi, is it an internal or external locus of control? While Jip Yong, is it an internal or external locus of control? So you're right, guys. 
si Lam Dosan, yung sa kanya, external locus of control, while si Chip yung internal locus of control, di ba? Parang kita mo talaga kung nasubaybayan nyo to, kung, kung hindi kayo fan, carry lang, pero ang masasabi ko lang ay they are both equally handsome and um, achievers. Yan. Okay, so moving forward, um, ano, what's the point? Ang gusto ko lang i-point out sa inyo is that in the future, when you start working, do not, parang, do not act unethically just to get the position. I was talking to a friend um, recently, and she said that um, she's older than her boss, primarily because the boss has been there for the, with the organization for the past several years already. So, Ayun, um, anong tawag dito? Parang there's that balita. Qualified naman siya academically siguro. Pero parang ano, she really made her way to get that position um, and, and um, work closely with the, with the boss to, to choose her or to appoint her as the, uh, for that position. So wag yun. At saka, you also have to protect yourself. In the future, it's okay to be assertive or it's okay to trust or to have friends but for example you have ideas i i remember this is a multinational company based in the philippines so the employee the person or the girl was always telling her ideas to a teammate regarding um a certain strategy for the company you know what happened that teammate hindi naman talaga sila friends colleague child ang kanilang relationship that colleague told the boss about the strategy and this office mate was commended for that uh, suggestion. Pero hindi na nagsalita tong person na to, yung kung sino talaga yung nakaisip kasi what's the point? Wala naman siyang proof na the idea came from her. So wala lang. It's just um, um, parang know who to trust with. Be a good judge of character na rin. Okay? So of course, do not act unethically. Organization's culture and issue intensity, another characteristic, okay? So a strong culture um, with high ethical standards is more likely to influence ethical behavior within an organization. And if I may just share with you, after graduation, I worked for a multinational company also in Makari. I really like the people, the salary, the ambience, everything I like, except for the nature of job because it was a BPO. And I realized na kahit madaladala ko, parang hirap ako sa graveyard shift. So, um, but it was a good, good experience because I was with people na kasing age ko halos from um, good universities here in the Philippines and and so sobrang diligent din talaga when it comes to work. So I saw in there the strong culture with high ethical standards because the company was able to hire good people. So if you, um, kaya nga, I'm always telling or sharing with you, um, work for a company with the same vision and mission na katulad dun sa inyo. Kung hindi man kayo matanggap dun sa dream job ninyo, at least go to a similar, a competitor, a similar company for that. Anyway, issue intensity is determined by the greatness of harm, concentration of effect, consensus of wrong, probability of harm, immediacy of consequences, and proximity to victims. So, issue intensity. Um, ano ba yung tawag dito? Ayoko nung personal story kasi recently may nangyari. Pero ano, uh, I'm, uh, what I'm going to share with you was the case of, of a former office mate. It happened... A long, long time ago, almost two decades. So, si Kuya, kabatian ko siya sa office. Di ba marami nga ako na pagtrabahuhan? And then, one day, isang araw, wala na siya. Hindi ko siya nakikita sa office. And then, I just heard that, um, allegedly, um, winan to three niya yung pera na dapat ipapasweldo sa amin. Kasi ano lang kami nun eh, contractuals. So sabi ko, parang ang ang payo ng management sa kanya instead of being sued, just gracefully exit. So instead of having those litigations, so nagresign na lang siya. Um it's a grave offense of course because it's something to do with the resource of the organization, more so the salary of your little poor employees. So yun. Um kahit ano pa, kahit parang andaling sabihin pero mahirap talagang gawin. Mm, do not think 
let us not taint our our good records just because of money. I hope really I I would be able to to really um, do that until the end. Because yun nga sinasabi ko sino, one of my greatest fears is to become the person I detest to be. And I don't want that. Kasi parang nauubos naman kasi yung pera eh. Pero yeah, money is something you need it, but it's not everything. It's not evil, but the way how we, we use it. Sometimes I tell myself now, or I pray na, sabi ko, wala, sana, Lord, I can be a good steward of the resources in all aspects that you're giving me, mga kipong ganyan. So, yun lang din talaga. Now, moving forward to structural variables, let's move to the organizational mechanisms that influence ethics. Malapit na tayo matapos. Siguro mga ano na lang, 30 minutes pa, hindi, joke lang. So, we have here the formal rules and regulations that minimize ambiguity and remind employees of what is ethical. Um, anong gamot sa taong nakakalim, nakakalimot? It's always a reminder. I believe in that. Okay? And the use of goals. The goals of the organization um, has to be or have to be parallel with your goals then. Performance appraisal system. So here, one of the ways by which we are um, appraised or evaluated is through the set or the student evaluation test. However, for the past, how many semesters na ba? Pa third na ngayon, walang, walang set. Pero I remember when I worked for an international NGO, we have that iPad. So periodically, for example, every quarter, you will be evaluated based on your performance. There are metrics. Um, one I can share with you is that When I work for the BPO, our manager usually uh, gets a random call within a week's time, and then he would evaluate it based on the quality of voice, the intonation, etc., etc. So instead of taking the comments personally, you have to take it constructively, diba? Performance appraisal. It's also um, needed. Uh, para din sa mga bonuses ng mga empleyado. Kunwari, sa UP, parang we have to publish by this number every year to have these conferences, to have these projects which are government-funded. So those are some of the metrics for performance appraisal of a university, more so of a unit or a college. Yun. There are really plenty of things and it's unique to an organization where you will be part of or are you part of so reward allocation procedures um for example diba if the business performs well within the year nagbibigay sila ng uh, dividendo kaya lang last year talaga diba we talk about stocks recently last year talaga ewan ko bibihira siguro ang companies na nakapagbigay ng dividendo kasi nga majority are operating if not break even at all so i was listening to an agribusiness um seminar or webinar earlier and then you know um carmen's best it's a uh, high-end para siyang hagen das high-end ice cream and then sabi niya alam niyo yun we are still thriving or operating to even at the point of break even na nga or negative para lang may maipasweldo sa mga empleyado nila so yun um if the company is performing well yan, pwede sila magbigay ng mga ano, rewards. Okay? Now, what are the decision-making approaches? There are four actually, guys. We have the utilitarian approach, the individualism approach, the moral rights approach, and the justice approach. Okay? So, what is the utilitarian approach? It is moral behavior. It is the moral behavior that produces the greatest good for the greatest number. Sino yung naiisip ninyo or anong organization na iisip nyo when it comes to utilitarian approach? By the way, guys, these decision-making approaches uh, can be exemplified by the organization or business na combination. Okay? Hindi lang siya mutually exclusive na utilitarian lang. But to be practical about this, moral behavior produces the greatest good for the greatest number. Our parents, they didn't want, di ba, um, What's bad for us? They just want us to propel forward or to become diba, successful in whatever form we want to be. So, yun. Sila talaga. Or us teachers, yun nga, uh, last year, we really had difficulty because 
um, di ba yung mga estudyante end the semester now? Parang sabi ko, grabe yung mga estudyante, in-invalidate ba nila yung efforts na pinut ng mga professors nila, ng mga teachers nila, just to just to make it uh, bearable for them. Parang ganun, sabi, sabi nga nung, ano, nung friend ko, um, she used to be our department chair, sabi niya, alam mo yun, yung parang yung mga estudyante kasi, naiisip natin sila when we designed the course pack, pero parang ano, ginagawa nila tayong kaaway. So actually, we, we want the best for you, cliche as it may sound to be, because yun nga, We are academicians, especially in UP, who shape the minds and hearts that will shape the nation. So imagine if hindi magen nagi maganda yung training ground niyo. If we're just going to give into whatever you like, then what will be it like in the future? Me and my my sister were talking before. She's working in one of the multinational companies, also in Makati, and then she said. You know what? Parang alam mo ay sa um kasi may pamangkin ako teenager pa siya. I don't know what will happen to the Philippines or to the world having this um youth. Sabi ko, ano? Let's just hope that it's gonna be for the best. Alam niyo yon, yon, yun nga. Okay. At saka ano? When you want to assert things, there are proper platforms, not the Twitter, not the Facebook. What for? What's the purpose of that? To draw attention. So anyway, that's for the utilitarian approach. Um, for the individualism approach, it uh, means to act morally when the organization leads you to an individual's best long-term interest, which will ultimately lead to the common good. So for example, you manage training you. Um, you're being trained. For to replace him or her. So, in whatever form your manager uh, can give to you, gagawin niya yon. Kasi alam niya na ikaw yung magiging next in line na para maging manager. So even teachers can fall also in under this category. Okay, best long-term interest, which will ultimately lead to the common good. So, for example, I am a manager and I am I'm handling a team. So, sa kunwari lang tentatively, in the future, nagi department chair ako. Parang I won't just think of my of my good, but rather for my colleagues and for the department as well. Kailangan kasi may foresight. Um, alam niyo yun parang Five, ten, twenty, or even fifty years from now, where do we want to become? That's why the strategic management is really very important. Okay, at sa ka alam at kita at ramdam mo yun. Not just ano going through the motions or dynamics of every day. Not just enrich enriching oneself, oneself, but rather you enrich others so that you can all go or rise together. So that's what that's the characteristic of a good manager, well. At least to me. So moral rights approach. Moral decisions are those that best maintain the rights of those people affected by them. So an ethical decision is one that avoids interfering with the fundamental rights of others. So meaning fundamental, the basic rights of others, right? Okay. So what are the moral rights issues? We have the right of free consent. Isa isa hinatin yan. Right to privacy. Right to freedom of conscience. Right of speech. Okay. Right. To due process and right to life and safety. Nalala ko there's that commercial ng bata ko. Karapatan ng bata na maglaro at mag ano tawo dito? Maglaro yun. Maglaro at ano to freely express himself or herself. So dito sabi the right of free consent refers to an agreement when both parties knowingly and willingly enter into a a contract of their own will, meaning that Di ba in the future you will be hired for a certain position? Um, there's no binding and legal contract unless you sign, you freely sign the documents or the agreement. So kung kung mare ako may arrange ako na kung panya, um, may kailangan ako mga tao na hire ako. So from among all the roster na kapili ako ng kung mare out of ten yun nagapply dalawa yung na tanggap. And when I offer the contract with them, 
ano tawag dito, um, discretion nila kung tatanggapin nila or hindi yung kontrata. So, that's the right to free consent. In terms of right to privacy, natatawa ako dito kasi <coughs> I had a professor before in management to one, the higher management to one, who, who gave an example, but that's not the point. So, the right to privacy is that whatever happens to you during office hours, for example, or even as work from home, during the work from home, we are um, we are tasked to perform our duties and responsibilities as academicians, as professors or teachers. But whatever happens after that is something na our own privacy. Diba, all of us naman are keeping something to ourselves. So, yun. Kaya, medyo mahirap din pag open book. Yun. The right to privacy and the management or organization has to respect that. Kaya nga, pardon me if, kunwari, nagsisend ako ng message sa weekend or, or um, beyond working hours kasi uh, that's already the right to our privacy. So whatever happens after those periods, eh, di ba, bahala na kayo. Ito naman, right of freedom of conscience. So, nakalagay dito, everyone has the right of freedom of thought of conscience and that right um, includes um, changing our beliefs or freedom to work with either alone or in groups with our community whether publicly or privately so right of conscience diba meron nga nung ano ano ba yan yung sa terrorism law or uh, kaya nga parang hindi rin ako in favor doon. Pero yung mas konkreto, yung DND Accord. <laughs> yung DND Accord, kapag napawalang visa yun, guys, actually, first, it is unconstitutional that even the president cannot cannot, ano, baliin, cannot tweak that law. Kundi, ano, pwede siyang ma-impeach. So, right of freedom of, uh, freedom of conscience. Para kapag nangyari yun kasi, the military personnel can freely go inside and outside of the university for all UP campuses without notice. Kasi ngayon, parang nagsasabi mo muna sila sa administration, sa chancellor, papaalam sila. That's, it cuts also across yun sa the right to privacy and free of speech, di ba? So, Another thing naman, the right of free speech is that no law shall be passed abridging the freedom of speech, of expression, or of the press, or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and petition the government for redress of grievances. So, naalala ko si Maria Reza, di ba? Grabe rin yung nangyari sa babae yun. Pero she's really a strong woman. At least, ano pa rin, um, sh- she has her liberty. So, ewan ko kung ano yung naging decision ng law. Grabe talaga. Sabi ko nga, parang with COVID, aside from the the stress that we experience na we have to stay at home, we cannot really go out, parang mas lalong nasusupress yung mga bagay-bagay for us. And it's not a good sign. Diba? Parang it's not nourishing. Hindi ko na nga alam kung sino si Sine, pero sabi ko, um, it that change that I want to have should start within myself. Pandali sabihan, pero minsan nakaka, nakaka, ano na rin eh, nakaka, uh, iba na rin. Okay, so right to due process, ayan, yung the right to law, di ba, parang ano, ganito yan, you are proven innocent unless otherwise found guilty. So, there has to be a process or procedure na mangyayari before uh, an alleged criminal or suspect will be um, vindicated. Mga tipong kanyan. So, the right, right to life and safety, yung nga sabi ko, yung basic services, um, fresh air, clean water, those are some of the examples. Karapatan ng mga bata maglaro at maglibang. Pero napansin ko, ewan ko kung sa generation nyo, you were able to experience how to play outdoors like um, sikyo, patintero, 
Kahit hindi naman ako ganun ka-sporty, na-experience ko naman yung mga Chinese garter, habul, tagutaguan, mga habul-habulan, pero lagi akong taya, mga tipong ganyan. So, parang it's one of the things na sana we can get to experience pa rin because it's our right, di ba? So, for the last one, for under the ethical decision-making approaches, we have the justice approach. So, in here, moral decisions must be based on standards of equity, fairness, and impartiality. For example, you, uh, you deserve a raise or a promotion because of your performance. And it is, should be based on the performance appraisal. So, that is very justifiable. So, it's one of the examples of a justice approach inside the organization. Standards of equity, fairness, and impartiality. Okay? So, sabi nga ngayon, how do we manage company ethics? Hire ethical individuals. Ang hirap naman nito, no? So, sabi ko nga, how will you gauge a person's um, personality at the onset na in-interview mo lang, pinag, di ba, pinagkuha mo ng exam? So, is there a way for the HR or psychiatrist or organizational behavior behavior specialist to assess that higher ethical individuals who are honest have integrity who strive for a high level of moral development and those who maintain ethical leadership provide the necessary actions commit to ethical values and help others to embody those values design organizational structure which embodies a code of ethics and methods to implement ethical behavior guys by the way some of the companies in the usa uh, they have this but i'm not so sure here in the philippines if we have this ethic ethics audits okay this is a systematic effort to determine conformance to the ethical policies of the organization it's like a triangulation aside from the hr diba perhaps there can be a third party consultant who will do or assess whether this company is doing things ethically or not but it's an additional cause and part of the organization of course so, moving forward, do you have questions, clarification, or point of discussion for um, ethics? You can raise it. You can PM me or raise it in class. Okay. So, you know what? Management is really very interesting because we don't actually study it. I mean, we don't um, actually... Burahin nyo yung sinabi ko. Um, parang we are doing management or applying management into our lives without us coining the term, but we're already doing it. So let's move forward to the social responsibility. Sino nakarinig na about social responsibility? What is your perception about social responsibility? It is the organization's obligation to make choices and take actions that will contribute to the welfare and interest of the society and organization. Sabi ko dun sa friend ko dati, eh di ba pag may social responsibility activities yung mga kumpanya, um, kumbaga pwede i-declare yun ng mga companies as cause, part of their cause, and that they won't be taxed for that. Sabi niya, ano bang gusto mo? Uh, is there a social responsibility activity or ano, status quo? Di ba sabi niya, mas okay na may social responsibility regardless of ko ano man yung reasons ng company rather than status quo. Okay, matipong ganyan. But what is social responsibility? We have two views here. Uh, the classical view, which means management's social responsibility is to maximize profit. This is also called the social obligation. This is the obligation of all businesses. So according to one of the management gurus, Dr. Milton Friedman, he said that management's primary Social responsibility is to operate the business in the best interest of the stockholders. For example, it's my social responsibility to my students to provide quality education to help them prepare for the future. And it is the responsibility or social responsibility of the students being the so-called scholars ng bayan to also study well and give back. Okay? It's not just the grades, guys, but rather, yun nga, a combination of utak and Puso. Okay? So, yun. Before kasi we were always taught or told na it's UP and others. When in fact, it's not. When I, I work in a multinational company, so I go, Whoa. ang eloquent ng mga taga Arneo, tsaka ano, the way how they perceive things. Magagaling din yung mga taga na UP Diliman. Pero, um, ako rin, I, I would vouch for mga UPLB. Pero syempre, 
um, there are certain expectations and you cannot shun away from that. It has to be a balance of utak and puso as well as our written and oral skills there. So those are the things that you have to work on, I guess. Okay, for the socioeconomic view, it is the view that management social responsibility includes not only economics, but also the protection and improvement of um, company welfare. So, nandito yung tinatawag na social responsiveness and social responsibility. It is a company, social responsiveness is the company, is when the company engages in social actions in response to some popular and social needs. I remember uh, as a young professional before, parang yung mga multinational companies, they go on um, mga tree planting, coastal cleanup, related sa environment, mga tipong ganyan. Yung social responsiveness activities nila. Ngayon, we can still do it online, pero more of, ano, kunwari mga livelihood um, seminars or training. Sa UP, yung social responsibility arm yan is under the UP Pahinungod, or UP, in our case, UPLB Pahinungod. So social responsibility, it is the business intention to do the right thing and act in ways that are good for the society. This goes beyond what is obligated to do or what is popular. Para kumbaga, um, yung sa social responsiveness, you're doing it um, because the company is owed to, to do it. Pero pag sa social responsibility, yung intention of business uh, to do good things cuts across that responsiveness. So I hope I explained that uh, well or right. Um, parang kumbaga, social responsibility supersedes the social responsiveness. Parang yung responsiveness, yun nga, parang you're doing it kasi kailangan mo. Pero yung sa responsibility, social responsibility, you do it out of um, a, a greater purpose. So what are, and then there's another view, di ba? Kanina we have the classical view and social economic view. There's a growing um, growing view for the past decade. Why? Because we often heard the word sustainable development and it's called the green management. So it is a form of management where in managers, this is something to do with our sustainable development goals. So what are those, what are the concrete sustainable management or sustainable development goals that you can associate and under the green management. So it is a form of management where in managers consider the impact of their organization and the natural environment. So what are the approaches on going green? We have the legal or light green approach, doing what is required. Lowest this this is the lowest degree of environmental sensitivity. Siguro yung diba wag kang magkakalat, parang tamang pagtapon nung basura dun sa um, basurahan, pero Yun nga, yung basic na waste segregation of biodegradable and biodegradable. Hirap na hirap tayong i-apply. Kaya nga dito sa amin, sa nanay ko, ano, dami na nga trabaho pag ito si Hiwaling ko pa yung nabubulok sa hindi nabubulok. Tsaka problema rin yung space. Pero I think oh, we can start by doing that, waste segregation. Market approach responding to the preferences of the customers, the stakeholder approach. Um, for example, sige, yung response responding to the preferences of the customer. Well, it starts with the LGU, for example, yung banning the use of plastics, going on um, eco-friendly packaging materials. So it can be, diba? Actually, um, there's a shift in preference right the, now that people worldwide uh, have changing preference to more eco-friendly um, materials. Even on food, meron na kung when I studied my, when I did my final paper a couple of years ago, ang sabi doon, um, there's a growing demand for plant-based source of protein. Diba? Like yun nga, mga tofu, mga mushroom, pwede rin siguro eventually yung algae, seaweeds, for example. I didn't eat seaweeds until I was um, already working. Kasi, syempre, landlock naman yung nilakihan kong lugar. So, hindi ako masyadong familiar sa mga lamang dagat. Okay? Stakeholder approach. Organizations work to meet the environmental demands of multiple stakeholders such as employees, suppliers, and the larger community. I remember when I worked for uh, an environmental consultancy company. <laughs> Pati ba namin ko talaga napuntahan. Um, I'm rich in experience. Yun lang masasabi ko. 
uh, we we did the EIS of I don't know if you have heard that the environmental impact statement of a certain business, and then we it has different components: the social component, the economic component, and the environmental component. So yun din yung aspects of sustainability. You have to bind them together and propose concrete actions or solutions on how you can attain it. And it's the also the responsibility of the company to give in not just to the community at large, but also to its um to its investors. Okay, investors, di ba? Shareholders, iisang ano yan, term. For the stakeholders, we are speaking of the internal and external employees or customers. So those are your suppliers, your employees, and all the people who will be directly and even indirectly affected by your business. Now, we have also the so-called activist or dark green approach. These activities lead to the protection of the Earth's natural resources, highest degree of environmental sensitivity. I remember, alam mo yung tuwan-tuwa talaga ako sa Toyota cars. And I want that. I dreamed that for myself, to have that hybrid car. Um, powered by, um, pwede siyang fuel, pwede rin siyang uh, solar panel kung ako nagkakamali. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that hybrid car is a more eco-friendly friendly car. So for example, other products diba, that we are patronizing, kunwari from human nature or yung pong mga buy local, go global na mga produkto natin na di umani yung mga organic. So, those are just some of the examples. Can you think of a product or a service that you are patronizing that actually protects the environment and to some extent, the larger community? So, that's my um, parting question to you guys and that ends our discussion. These are our references and thank you again for listening. See you for our next episode.